Hello everyone, I'm Daz and welcome to American Civil War and UK History Podcast. This presentation is available as a video on our YouTube channel and as a podcast from wherever you get your podcasts from. And remember on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And this year is a very special year. It is the 30th anniversary of the movie Gettysburg. And of course, you know, the reason why I'm into the Civil War and everything I do is, of course, because of the movie Gettysburg. So joining me today uh, to discuss the movie and his involvement is actor Brian Mallon. Welcome, Brian. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, of course, also known as General Hancock to me, you know. Uh, I look at you and that's all I can see is uh, General Hancock, you know. Um, Gettysburg, Gettysburg, the movie came out on October the 8th, 1993. And again, just as I said, the movie is the reason why I got into, you know, reenacting and, and, and podcasting and, and, and history in general, really. What age were you then? So I was um, around about 21, I think, when I first saw that film. Yeah. OK, yeah. All right. Very, very young. Um, yeah. And fr from that, I started doing English Civil War reenacting. But also, obviously, that was always my favourite period. Um, mm -hmm. But Brian, can we start by telling us a little bit about yourself and um, when does the acting career start for you? Well, I grew up in uh, a very nice, what was a very nice part of Detroit, northwest Detroit, St. Mary's Redford. And uh, I went to University of Michigan. When I was 20, I came over to Ireland where I was for a year and uh, and I decided to go back home and I went back to school and I got into acting classes and things like that. Uh, a friend of mine from Dublin who was there got me into a play and, and I decided I liked all that. So when I was 26, I moved uh, out to New York uh, and I was looking through various, well, New York magazine and such. And I found the Irish Art Center uh, and it said uh, it was the Irish Rebel Theatre at the Irish Art Centre. So I was expecting something, a big art centre like Lincoln Centre. And of course, what it was, was a converted garage. And um, uh, anyway, but I went in there and uh, met just tons of friends that I still have. Uh, and they, somebody put me up immediately. They needed a, a Gaelic teacher and I spoke Irish. And um, and I was in a play within one week. Uh, I was performing, you know, uh, with them. So that was a, it. Was a great spot to go. You know, it really was a good place to land. And I worked at the Irish Art Center. I was the artistic director there for a while. And I and then I, I became a member of the Actors Studio in New York, which is kind of a big deal for actors. And. Um, it was Ellen Burstyn and, and Paul Newman kind of got me into it and uh, worked away there. And then I went, I moved out to uh, Los Angeles uh, in the early 90s. And um, I, I worked at the Celtic Art Center, which was connected in some which way, you know, to that. And we did a, a wonderful play called uh, Translations by Brian Friel. And it was a big hit. I think it would it could have been lost in New York, but L.A. has very little theater that isn't uh, vanity productions, you know. <laughs> so anyway, this thing was a big hit, and we won eight Drama Logue Awards. And, and one night, Ron Maxwell came to see it. And uh, we heard that he really loved it, and he was coming back and bringing producers from some show that he was doing, you know. So... Uh, that was pretty exciting. And, and uh, so he did come back and, and he brought Bob Katz and some of the other producers. Uh, he brought uh, he brought the producers and, and then he talked to me afterwards uh, uh, in the, uh, the Cafe Beckett next door, which I was running at the time. And um, anyway, and he, he, uh, he really, he, he, well, he offered me the part. Uh, uh, initially and um which was good he you know he uh well he talked about me playing um kill uh, kill rain actually initially because it was an irish part but uh that got changed around very quickly 
And um, it was funny because we were sitting at a table and uh, this uh, an Apache Indian friend that I had there came by and he was wearing a, uh, a Union General's hat from the Civil War. And Ron just laughed and said, oh, hey, I like, you know, I like your hat. And uh, I, at this point, didn't even know that he was doing something about the Civil War because we hadn't really started talking yet. And this friend of mine puts the hat on my head, and Ron just thought that was hilarious because he was about to offer me this job in the uh, in the Civil War movie. Anyway, and the fellow he told me to keep it, which I which I did. The, this friend, anyway, but uh, that's pretty much how I got the job. Uh, yeah, so, so Ron your background, started. yeah. So your background is more sort of theatre then. So um, jumping into the movies, that was uh, was that new for you, or had you been in movies before before well, you got uh, role? I, a small part in a thing with Pacino that I did, uh, you know. Uh, before but generally i'm strictly a a, a theater actor up to that point okay yeah and so Although that was the reason i went to la was to get into some film you know yeah of course um yeah so um did you realize obviously that this was going to be you know as big as it would turn out to be eventually as we'll probably discuss a further along no i didn't really know that it was going to be a, any kind of a huge deal initially it was going to be a tv miniseries as he said, and um, and th that was that was exciting enough, you know. And it was only later, uh, I think, when uh, Ted Turner started watching it that he decided that it needed to be on the big screen. Yeah, which was wonderful because it gave us like again half of our salary again, you know. Yeah. So that well, was wonderful. Okay, so obviously you get you get this part. Um... But was history in the American Civil War something you was interested in before you got this part? Well, I, I've always been interested in history, you know, and um, and the Civil War is always fascinating. It's very romantic with the wonderful uniforms and all that sort of thing, and 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 the gallantry of it, and the oh, the noble cause behind it, and everything else. It just was something that uh, had always appealed to me, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I wasn't a scholar on it or any such thing, no. you know. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask you. You know, so obviously you get you get this part as uh, playing, which is is quite an important general. You know, he's he's uh, corps commander of the second corps. He's in uh, involved in pretty much most of the you know big engagements throughout the whole of the war. Um, so, did you um, do any research into into General Hancock himself, or did you read Killer Angels? Or... Oh no! Well, of course you read. The first thing I read was Killer Angels, and then I read uh, Hancock the Superb, and uh, a, a few other books. Whatever I could get my hands on, I read. You know. Yeah. And, so that, uh, that gave you, uh, you know, got you into the character. Say, say, for instance. Oh yeah, definitely. I could I could relate to him Im immediately, and I really liked him. And uh, I mean, at the time, he was not really a, a big name in Civil War history. Uh, most pe Americans didn't know who he was, you know. No, okay, yeah. he'd been sort of forgotten over the years. So it's great the way that the movie resurrected him, you know, mm -hmm. dusted him off and presented him again, and uh, that was quite an honor to be able to do that. Okay, so you get this huge opportunity to go and be in this this movie, and so let's talk about the film location because it was actually filmed, wasn't it, on the national park um, in Gettysburg itself? Um, not, I mean, some parts of the battlefield were used, uh, like Devil's Den, Little Round Top, places like that. But um, I, I think it was a nearby farm they used, didn't they? But tell us about your experience. Well, the, the actual battlefield is so covered with monuments that you couldn't, you know, you no, couldn't get a not, shot no. without them. Yeah. Uh, so it, they went the very, the very. I think it was the nearest farm, you know, so that it was. Uh, you had all the exact same land formations uh, as would have been seen, you know, uh, from the the actual battlefield, and uh, it was just perfect, you know. Yeah. And Ted Turner apparently, out of his pocket, paid to get have all the uh, the electrical wires and lines and things all put underground. Uh, which is still something that you can marvel at when you're there, that that it, it, you don't even, you know, you don't see any of those elements of modernity. Mm -hmm. And so 
your time there, did you actually manage to get out and tour the battlefield and, and, and get a feel for the place? Oh, I did. I did. Uh, a couple of times I went out with with some of these wonderful uh, tour guides, battlefield guides, who uh, seemed to know everything that, that was to be known, you know, and um, uh, that was fascinating and, and very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you actually stay in Gettysburg itself during the filming as well? Seeing the, well, I stayed at the town? Getty- yeah, I stayed at the Gettysburg Hotel, uh, right in the middle of town there, and um, and it was kind of amazing because uh, Ron had me there for four months, really, from the first day of shooting right to the end, and we we had become great friends. You know, he's still one of my uh, very best friends after all this time. You know. So I also got a great friend out of it, but um, but yeah, I had you know we weren't hardly the uh, it was all the Confederates shooting, and I was the the only Yankee around, hmm. uh, you know. But we we all had a great time. There was the uh, the Farnsworth Tavern there that we yeah. more or less took over, you know, and that, that was great fun. Yeah, so I've been in the Farnsworth Tavern, and uh, of course, they, they um, when I went in 2006 and 2007, it was some time ago now, they had a cabinet with all the film memorabilia in, and uh, they played the, the film on loop, uh, uh, you know, during the opening hours. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of props. Yeah, they still do. It's cabinet. like a shrine to the film. It's, it's yeah. actually pretty wonderful, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing place. If anyone's in Gettysburg and you haven't been in there, definitely go in there. Of course, you've got bullet holes as well up the side of the building from the actual battle itself as well. Which That's is true, cool. yeah. I was looking at them. I was there uh, last year. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, you know, how was you treated by the people in, in Gettysburg itself? You know, you're there for four months, so, it, you you know, it's basically living there, wasn't you, you know? Oh, yeah, 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 you get very used to it. And uh, the, oh, the people were all terrific. They were excited about the movie being made, and they were uh, uh, very welcoming and very nice, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, so as you said, you, you had an amazing director. You had Ron, Ron Maxwell, as you said, became really good friends with um so um, what was it like getting to work with some of the other people in this film? Because there's, you know, some big guys in this film, wasn't there? You know, I mean, did you rub shoulders with some of these guys and spend some time with them? Well, I especially liked uh, Sam Elliott. Um, we went to dinner a couple of times and and um, and he would come in and hang out with me in, in, the, in the Farnsworth. And uh, he was just great fun. We just had a great laugh, you know. And uh, it was such a thrill to be working with him in the scene. Yeah. And uh, what about, um, what was your impressions of um, um, Jeff Daniels? Because you worked with him a little bit on screen, didn't you? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, he, uh, Jeff, uh, he, I mean, he's a fine fellow and a fine actor and all that, you know. Uh, he, he's, I didn't find him a very, a extremely friendly fellow, you know. Okay. But, but uh, you know, a nice guy and, and all the rest of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay, then. So, you know, tell us what steps were taken, obviously, to transform you into General Hancock every day. You know, um, obviously, you had to have your uniform, you know, put on your uniform and get dressed into all that. And, uh, you know, what was it like becoming that, that person every day? Did you actually think that well, you was that person, you know? In, initially, they they had these beard makers, and I was in, living in Manhattan, and I had to go out to Queens, and they made a plaster cast of my face, and then they made this beard. And when I got there the first day, they put it on me, and uh, it was just god awful. It was it would have been as bad as as the worst of them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and. Uh, I looked like a nutcracker, you know, just uh, this thing plastered in, onto my face, you know. But I went to Ron and and uh, he kind of sympathized and he said, well, you're not shooting for three weeks. So if you can grow a beard in three weeks, you can wear that. But otherwise, this is it. So I was able to grow the beard in, in that I used in, in three weeks. And that was it. I just darkened a bit of it with pencil and that was it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's that, um, I watched a great video a couple of weeks ago, uh, called, uh, get his beard. Uh, you know, uh, oh, Mer- I saw it. I saw Mer- it. Mer- 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 Mer-
they, they were saying about, you know, the bad beards. But I actually thought the beards were worse in gods and generals, if I was honest with you. Oh, um, all right. Well, that's that just my opinion, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I never wore anything but my own, so yeah. I, I was out of that fracas. But, yeah, but it, that was a great, great, fun little video there that they put together, which um, if, if you know, you, you, you can find it on YouTube, go and support American Battlefield Trust because, obviously, they're doing some important work, you know. Was that so, yours, you know, the, the Gettysburg thing? No, that was uh, American Battlefield Trust that put that together. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, I just caught that the other day. Yeah. 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 So, um, and you were, I think you were actually in that at some point as well. You I was, yeah. Yeah. I, although I had forgotten it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, again, you know, another thing is in the movie, you spend a bit of time up on a horse. So, for you, was that a strange uh, thing to be doing? Um, you know, and did you have to get some kind of training, be able to do that? Or Oh, well, I did get training there. I, I had... Oh, I've been on a horse a few times, but I was no horseman, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, they, they were great. They were the uh, the wranglers and stuff, and they they made sure that we went out. And uh, there were so many days when I was not filming and I was there that I would go out with other actors, horse riding, horseback riding, and uh, so I, I thought I got to be pretty decent at it, you know. Yeah. So that that's cool. You got sort of got used to the riding and uh yeah going out and riding around the area i suppose that was a great thing to do to pass the time yeah oh yeah beautiful places to ride the, the horses okay so um one of my favorite scenes of, of of the whole film is uh it's a scene on cemetery ridge during the cannonade and you're up on your horse and i believe it's ken burns that comes up to you and says uh uh, sorry, uh, General, we can't spare you, or whatever he says, I can't remember. And uh, you turn around and say, there's sometimes a core commander's life doesn't count. And it's one of my favourite scenes. What I would love to know is, what was one of your favourite and uh, scenes to be involved in in the movie itself? Well, I think I really enjoyed the um, the scene with, um, with Sam Elliott, um, with Buford there, uh, and... Um, uh, there were just moments in it that were that I took that were uh, were uh, moving to me in a way, you know. Uh, that were yeah. it was very good. And that's, when I was at dinner with Sam, he said, uh, he said, uh, well, you know, he said, uh, when you said uh, California, uh, boy, he says, I didn't see palm trees; I saw the old west. Uh, you know, because I had made the trouble to make the pronunciation something that would have been current at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a new word and everything else. It was so it wasn't just California. It was probably California, you know, this kind of thing. That's but, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And it was a thrill to be working with him. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, there's some massive scenes in the film, as you know, with a cannonade and uh, and Pickett's charge. Um, but did you actually uh, get get an, a chance to actually go out and watch some of these scenes being filmed because they were huge, wasn't they? I spent oh, I the did, cannonade. I did. That was the thing. If I wasn't uh, shooting, I could go out and watch, and I did a lot of times, and uh, they were all always amazing. You know. Um, I was. I remember being amazed at the the little round top stuff, uh, and that 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 there were five charges up that hill. You know. Yeah. And, and I was wondering. Now to myself, I thought, how was would an audience sit still for five charges up the same hill? You know. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't imagine it working. And then when I saw it, it blew me away because it was very, very moving and, and the audiences loved it. Oh, yeah. It's a great piece of film. And it's just, yeah, like you said, it's very moving. Yeah. And, it, and it, you know, it is great. Um, but, yeah, it must have been tiring for them running up and down that hill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Summer heat as well. Yeah. That yeah. Was I mean, the, the cannonade itself as well, obviously, they have probably haven't heard a cannonade like that since the actual battle itself. So that must have been something oh, it, to the, hear and witness, the, you know. You didn't just hear it. The ground under your feet oh, was wow. shaking. Yeah. It was it was just an amazing thing to to be. Yeah, I was not far from those cannons and, and boy, blow your mind. 
Wow, I can imagine, yeah. And and again, you know, going back to the Pickett's Charge as well, I mean, that is probably one of the best piece of films you're ever going to see. I mean, the way that they shot that and the music and it's just emotional. and Thousands and of men, yeah. Yeah, thousands of men. Um, I was going to get back, you know, uh, mention the reenactors in a minute. But um, for me, as a reenactor, um, the bit my, one of my favourite bits is they all step out from the trees and you hear the clinks of the bayonets and the cups. You know, and it might sound weird to somebody, but because I understand, you know, it just resonates with me. I don't know why, but um, it's an absolute amazing scene, isn't it? And so well put together. It's because it's epic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the reenactors themselves, did you actually have time to, to, to mix oh, with I the reenactors? Oh, I did. And... We would get, uh, you know, invitations to, you know, go out and to their encampment. And um, I did a couple of times, but one, uh, the time I went at night was just unforgettable because somehow all these campfires and everybody in uniform and boy, these people stay in character mm -hmm. and somebody playing the fiddle and we sang some songs around the fire and all that kind of thing. And it, that was like time travel, you know, and they, they were the, the sort of people uh, who were well into ghost stories and, and, all that sort of thing. And it was just marvellous. Yeah. And, you know, as a reenactor myself, I can sort of uh, understand that. You know, I love, you know, going away for the weekend and literally just forgetting about the modern world and we just, you know, we, we, we're in that time period, you know. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, okay, so the release of the movie itself, uh, was there some kind of film premiere for that or...? Well, the funny thing was, being from Detroit and being my first big movie, uh, it was an amazing thing that we actually had a, a, a premiere. The premiere really was in Detroit uh, because Jeff Daniels has a theater near there. And it was a fundraiser for his theater. And uh, it was at the Fox Theater downtown, which was 4,500 seats. It was one of those old movie palaces that had been completely restored and it was it, it was just amazing just an amazing thing and it was fun because uh martin sheen took myself and my mother to lunch before that and uh it was such a thrill for her she's gone now but uh i i just never forget the, the thrill of all that and he was yeah. such a gent yeah and, and, and such great company and we had a lot of laughs around the table and all that and then we got to arrive in the limo with him and and ron you know and uh that was it was a real kick what a day that was wow yeah um just a just a little bit of information for the for the listeners and the viewers of of obviously the movie goes back so, so it was a mini series set to air on tnt but when ted turner saw part of the film during post-production, he realised it was much bigger than, you know, he had uh, anticipated. And so he did release it into the theatres. Um, and it did really well as well. I mean, even, I mean, I think it was 12 million it grossed or something at the box office in the end. And then, you know, VHS and DVD market. And again, today now, it's still huge after 30 years. And so my question is, did you ever think that, you know, after 30 years, it would still be this important. No, that had not occurred to me a bit. But when I think of it, uh, if I had done any other big movie that year, that same year, it would be long forgotten in the mists of time by now. And this is something that just stays with with everyone, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's still a thing, you know. It, it, it's a cult classic. That, that's what I like to say, you know. I mean, it, that's that's a good way to put it, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's timeless, you know. I, I think, you know, and, uh, you know, Gettysburg is an important battle in the Civil War, but, um, you know, it's just immortalised itself, I think, because of the connection to that huge battle as well, you know. So that that's the thing. So anyway, um, I'll just take a minute, because obviously, um, I can't remember, was it 11 years later you end up, obviously being cast again as Hancock in Gods and Generals. Um, so what was that like, uh, revisit, you know, going back and, and filming again for, for... Well, I could only say it was, uh, that was another thrill and it was, it was, uh, 
uh, very enjoyable once again to be back there and in the saddle again and the whole thing, you know. Um, uh, and uh, something that uh, I hadn't been expecting particularly. But, uh, no, that, that was... Uh, it was round two of, of uh, the fabulous production. Yeah. And unfortunately, the third one we'll probably never see. Um, no, that's not in the cards. No, definitely not. Um, but, yeah, so uh, am I right in saying that Gods and Generals was filmed uh, in, in and around the Fredericksburg area? Is that correct? Uh, no, I wouldn't say Fredericksburg. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 would. No, yeah, Fredericksburg and and other parts, yeah. Yeah. So there's some stuff in Staten. Again, you know, um, it's not as popular as Gettysburg, I don't think. But for me, it's still, you know, I really love that movie. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that that criticise it, and uh, but I still love it. And uh, so, but yeah, it's a great film. And uh, of course, you know, um, the wildly old fox didn't listen, did he? You know, he still sent him across that bridge, as you say in the movie. I think at some oh, point. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Burnside, you know. <laughs> I know, an idiot. Well, that, I think uh, Hancock had a lot of trouble with people that wouldn't listen to his advice, you know. Oh, definitely. Uh, all the way through. He really should have been in charge. Okay. Anyway, Brian, so um, do you still keep in, and I know you said you still keep in contact with some of these guys, but do you still obviously keep in contact and have um, communications with a lot of these guys that you worked with? Well, I would say I, I suppose yes to that. I, I uh, mostly on Facebook, you know, but messages and things like that. Um, Steve Lang had been a friend of mine before the film, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, oh, Con and Barry and and uh, and oh, um, Patrick Gorman. Uh, yes, I see now and again, and uh, always a pleasure to see him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so there were there were you know lots of friends made on that. And again, like I said, it's the 30th anniversary this year, so I believe there are actually celebrations going on in Gettysburg uh, to celebrate the movie this year. Are you are you going to be involved in any of that? Are you planning on going back to the states? And oh, I am, I am. I in fact, I just was on the phone about a half an hour before this uh, with this guy arranging flights and whatnot for me. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun, uh, you know. I think yeah. uh, uh, some of the stars, big, bigger, big stars, I should say, are will be there. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, of course, because you'll be, you know, seeing people maybe that you haven't seen in person for a little while. Maybe, yeah. Is that is that? Well, yeah, all that and and the hoopla and the fun and the. Yeah, of course, and of course you're in Gersberg as well. So what more could be you want? You know. Yeah. Okay then, Brian. So just a um, couple more questions. So um, are you still acting nowadays or are you sort of semi-retired or are you taking No, I'm acting. I, uh, I have a one-man show that I, I did about uh, Richard Burton, the Welsh actor. And uh, I had done it uh, to great uh, acclaim, really, I would say, in back in about 07. And... Um, I recently, uh, actually December, I did it once again. I had to relearn it after 15 years, and I did it in in Washington D.C. and that went very well. And I'm I'm talking to a theater here in Dublin about putting it up on the boards again. So I'm still still at it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So again, you've decided to relocate to uh, Dublin Island. So tell us about that and. Uh... How's it been in uh, living in Ireland? Well, I uh, I had finished a novel. I, I wrote a big novel, uh, Irish historical novel, called Shane O'Neill, The Grand Disturber. And when I finished writing it, at that point, I was staying with a friend up in uh, up about fifteen miles up from New York um, near Sneedon's Landing, and uh, I finished the book. And I thought, well. Manhattan had gone completely mad with their all their rents and everything else. I mean, like 10 times what I had been paying or used to paying. And I, I thought, no, I don't want to be end up in the arse end of Brooklyn, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I thought, uh, well, I, I, every time I've I've lived off and on in Dublin all my life. I've every few years I'd come out here for a year or two years or three, and uh, just long enough to lose my rent-controlled apartment in Manhattan. Uh, but I'm, I said, well, I'm always happy in Dublin, and I, I turns out I am. You know, I just love mm -hmm. the day to day of this place. Yeah, and uh, lots of friends here, and and uh, I love the pubs and and the whole everything. Who doesn't love a pub? You know, when you get <laughs> a proper, proper pint of Guinness as well. You oh, know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, do you have um, you know Irish heritage then, Brian? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm Irish through and through, and and uh, my dad's family came out really in the in the 1920s, most of them. Uh, and my mother's family had come out at the time of the famine. Uh, and uh, his people were from the north and hers were from out in County Clare and Tipperary. And uh, anyway, but I, yeah, I went back, I was able to go back to the, the house where her great grandfather had left in 1840. And the people are still living in the same house, and they're still their name is Power, uh, which is the same as my uh, grandmother's name, and um, and that was just fun. They were they were very welcoming and and all that, and looked at some old family graves and things. You know, it it, it was a, what they call a big house. It, it was it had been thatched up until a few years back, uh, but it was humongous. It was just a big one. You know, arable house, one of the few. Uh, named houses in that district, so they were still there. Nice, uh, but yeah, it's always been important to me that part of my heritage, you know. Yeah, maybe that's what drew 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 you back there, mate. You know. Oh, it yeah yeah well, uh, and, I, and obviously the pubs. Yeah, yeah, I had the pubs. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I I I taught myself. I started learning to speak Gaelic, speak Irish, as we call it here. Uh, when I was about uh, 13. Um, and, you know, so uh, that's been a... It's, it's taken my life in certain directions. Yeah. Okay, um, final thoughts anyway on the... So if you could sum up your experience of being part of the movie Gettysburg, what would you say, mate? Well, a wonderful hell of a ride, you know. Uh, 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 just the most uplifting experience that I can think of. Uh, it, it, it's such such an honor to be a part of it and uh, and to so gratifying to see that after all these 30 years, it still has a place in the heart of America. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the world, yeah, and the world. Yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite Civil War movie of, of all time. So, you know. Uh, have all of you guys that are involved in that to thank for that. And again, like I said, without all of you guys and without this movie, I'm not sitting here talking to you now. So, you know, there you go. Um, but anyway, yeah. Brian, just before we finish, would you mind doing that famous um, quote that you set up on that horse? Oh, uh, yes. In your, in your Hancock voice. There are times when a corps commander's life does not count. Oh, that was excellent. Wow. I, was, I thought I was watching the film then. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. It's been an absolute pleasure. Anyway, everybody. Same here. Yeah. Thanks again, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll see you all again soon. Cheers.